Hey everybody, I'm Robert Donovan. Welcome back to this episode of Tradecraft Solutions. In this episode, we are going to continue on our little guns detour to put some guns on this ship. And I have decided I'm going to do a new animation doing the exact same animation you saw in the arrival, but I'm going to have the version with uh, this ship that has all the guns and all the stuff that's been added since. I am working on getting that done as we speak. Unfortunately, with my computing power, it's probably going to take about two weeks to render. So... Uh, that's that's just the way I uh, the the way I'm set up right now. So sorry for the uh, inconvenience if you're looking forward to seeing that. For this episode, we're going to look at how to make these guns that go along the weapons arrays, and we're going to look at these guns on the top and bottom. These little turret things. Now these the ones in the back here. It's kind of hard to see on YouTube, but if I zoom way in, you can see the ones in the front are a little smaller. They have three barrels on either side. And the ones in the back are a little beefier. They have four barrels on either side, but they're still basically the same gun. They're just a different size. So we're going to just make both of those in one shot right now. So let's go ahead and hide the finished job. We will go ahead and go to numpad one. We're going to do alt home to center everything. And the first thing we want to do then is add a cylinder. So in object mode, oops, got to select the ship first. If you hit tab, sorry. And, oh, while I'm thinking of it, screencast keys on. There we go. All right, so to get into uh, object mode and edit mode, you hit the tab key. You can also go down here and click the selection in this menu down here. I want object mode. And we want to go shift A, mesh, cylinder. And then we're going to go G to grab, Z to constrain to the uh, Z axis, minus two, zero. I'm using meters as my units here. So I've now dropped this thing a couple of major grid units below the ship. Going to hit numpad slash to uh, go to local view. So it's uh, shading to smooth. And the first thing I did, oh, I forgot. We don't really need this uh, top and bottom fill on the, the cylinder right now. So let's go ahead and tab into edit mode. Click this face, go XF to get rid of it. Right click on this face here and go X, F, and that gets rid of that. Go back to numpad one, and there we go. So the first thing we want to do is we want to create the little side protruding parts, the things that swivel up and down. So what I first want to do is I want to make a little less work for myself, and I want to um, add, uh, add the mirror modifier. I'm also going to, since I have shading set to smooth, I'm going to just right now add the edge split modifier and keep that on the top there. And then I'm going to do shift, uh, I'm sorry, control tab, go to vertex mode, I'm going to hit B to box select, and I'm going to take all of these vertices. Whoops, let's do that again with the uh, this thing here turned off, which is the limit selection to visible. And we're going to do the B to box select because right now I have not selected the vertices in the back. i got to select all of them there. So now I have all those vertices selected. And let's do XV to delete that. And then I want to go over here and add the mirror modifier. I like to turn on the edit cage to modifier result. And we do need clipping turned on for this exercise. Now I want to hit a numpad 3, control tab F to go to face select mode. All right, so now uh, we want to select, in, looking at make sure you have right ortho showing up here to do this. And we want to select these seven faces here. And then do numpad one. And we want to do extrude X2. And then left click or enter. Zoom out a little bit so we can see what we're doing here. Move this a little to the side because we don't need to go that far over for now. Hit A to deselect everything. I need to add a little bit of geometry here. Going to add some loop cuts, so do Control R. And I want to uh, roll one click forward with the middle mouse wheel to create two loop cuts, and then double left click without moving the mouse. Make sure you have individual origins selected, and then do S to scale, X to constrain, and then zero, and then left click. And that straightens everything up, so you've got the loops going all the way straight. And now I want to, in numpad one, I'm going to just grab this with the X manipulator here and move these till they're one minor grid unit past this bit here. The idea is I don't want it running into this curve, and it, and it cuts it kind of close if you take it two inch farther in. Hit A, 
I'm going to do Shift Alt right click to select this one and move it in until it is about one and a half grid units out from the first one, like that. Okay, let's turn limit selection divisible back on because I want to make sure of which vertices I'm selecting and I need to go to vertex mode for that. So uh, control tab vertex or you can just click down here and do that. And with that, let's hit A to make sure we've deselected everything. And then I want to right click and select that vertex. Shift key down, right click, select that vertex. W, subdivide, come over here and set the number of cuts to six, like that. And I want to do that with the other line, so select that vertex, shift key, select that vertex, W, subdivide, number of cuts, six, again, and hit A, and then do control, numpad one, do the same thing for these guys on the back. Okay, and once you have that, we want to use the knife tool because we want to make these into faces. So hit K. And when you have the cursor for the knife tool, see it'll get a white outline on it. That means it has snapped to the vertex. And that is what we want. So let's do a left click and drag to drag this till it snaps to that other vertex. Left click, hit the E key. It probably won't show up on my screencast keys, but I'm hitting the E key to make a new cut and then just hit the E key again, left click, left click, hit the E key again, you get the idea, left click, left click, hit the E key between each cut, like that, and, and you can tell if you haven't hit the E key, because you'll see this line here, if you hit the E key it goes away, and that's what you want here. So once you have all of these vertex vertices joined, hit the enter key to Lock that in. We'll go back to the front and do the same thing there with the knife tool. So I'm going to do that right now. All right, that creates our uh, new geometry that we needed. So do Control Tab F to go to face select mode. Hit A to deselect everything. And then I want to do Shift Alt right click with the mouse over one of the lines and then select that entire loop of faces. Let's go ahead and turn limit selection to visible back on. Turn this a little bit so we can see what we're doing. And I now want to do extrude scale shift X 0.5 like that. Do numpad three and then do uh, scale the Z axis 0.7. All right, now I want that to be a circle, not a square. And fortunately, Blender has this really cool little tool called the circle tool. And if you click that, it makes that into a very nice circle. And this is really cool in, in, in the last couple of versions of Blender because the couple of versions before that, this thing would tend to crash Blender when you used it. Now it seems to work flawlessly, so thanks to the Blender development uh, crew for fixing that. I really actually love this tool. So let's turn Limit Selection Divisible back on and hit A to make sure we have deselected everything. And now... Uh, let's use the, uh, just go ahead and uh, select all of these faces here on the very end. Do an unpad 2, I'm sorry, an unpad 1, my bad. And then we're going to do, make sure you have the median point selected here as your pivot point. And then we want to do scale Z.6, like so. Hit A, deselects all that. And then you want to select every other face on the top and the bottom of this little structure we're working on here. All right, numpad one again. And again, make sure your median point is selected as your pivot point. And now we want to do extrude scale Z 1.15. All right, now come down here, going to use the C tool and the middle mouse button. Just click on the middle mouse and just slide that over and then right click. That deselects those faces, leaving these guys up here intact. We will now go uh, shift our orientation from global to normal, and then I want to do uh, scale Y, hit Y again, 0.9, hit A, and then go down here and select these four on the bottom again, and then do scale Y, hit Y again, 0.9, hit A, all right, and that creates the little cooling fins or cooling uh, portion there, and we're going to now go 
move this over, numpad one, center this up. Now we're going to work on the top and bottom rings and do something with that. So let's uh, control tab E, hit A a couple of times, make sure everything is uh, D selected, make sure you're in edge select mode. That's what control tab E does for you there. Shift, Alt, right click, and then I want to do extrude scale point four, left click, and then hit the F key to fill that in. All right, control tab again, we're going to face mode, and hold the shift key down. Want to select those two faces in the front and the counterpart faces in the back there, those two there. And let's do a numpad one, and I want to do extrude, and we want to hit Z a couple of times there, and then do point two. Okay, and then I want to scale that in a little bit, so let's change our orientation from normal to global just so we don't have any problems later on. And I want to now do scale shift Z point seven five. Okay, and hit A, just to kind of get a little something going on the top there. And again, you can use all of the surface detail tricks on this that we used on the ship. I'm just going through this a little more quickly to kind of get some basic surface detail and surface interest in there. But you absolutely do not need to stop here. You can make this as ornate or elaborate as you want. I'm just kind of keeping it really basic for this demonstration. But there you are. All right. One more time, control tab E to go back to edge select mode. Select this thing on the bottom. You need to make a little swivel base so that this thing can spin in the Z axis uh, when you're animating it. So shift, alt, and right click. That selects the entire bottom ring. And then we are going to do extrude scale shift Z. And we want to do a 0.9. Now, since we're dealing with the mirror modifier, this is going to be a little bit elliptical. And we don't really want that. But that's where our friend the circle tool comes in. Just click that. Bang. Now perfect circle. All right. Now, let's continue on. We have now extrude the z-axis minus 0.1 like that. And we're going to go ahead and extrude uh, scale shift z 1.25 left click, hit the circle tool again to make that a proper circle, numpad one, extrude, hit Z a couple of times, and we want that to be minus 0.25. Okay, so that's our basic turret. Now we've got to just make the gun barrels, and since I'm making two versions of this gun, I'm going to go ahead, hit A to deselect everything, hit tab to go into object mode, and I'm going to go shift D Z three like that. I'm going to select this one again, go back into edit mode, hit the tab key, and we're now going to actually scratch that, go back into object mode, my mistake. Uh, I want to create another cylinder, so let's do a numpad one. It's important to do the numpad one because otherwise things get a little, they aren't oriented correctly all the time, and, and that's, that's important when you're using these modifiers. So now that we have that taken care of. Let us add a cylinder. Shift A mesh cylinder again. Let's rotate it. Hit R in the X axis 90 degrees. So it's doing that. And we have here, do we have that coming out the front and the back? Yes we do. And all right first thing again I put a face on the end of this and I shouldn't have so let's hit tab and go into face select mode here. Select that face XF Select this face, XF, and then go back into edit mode with this cylinder. And then we're going to scale it down in the X and the Z axis, but not the Y. So we're going to do scale, shift Y, 0.2, like that. All right, now the next thing we want to do, and there's a point, I, I did this purposely to keep these things aligned because I'm going to be adding the barrels to both guns kind of at the same time. So let's make the barrels first. So the first thing I want to do here is get this thing oriented where I want it. And for that, I'm going to go into wireframe mode. going to zoom in a little bit so I've got these minor grid units to guide me. And we're going to go grab X 1.5. No, let's do control Z. Go grab X 1.6. Yeah, like that better. All right, now let's move this thing up. Uh, go grab Z point five, like that. Okay, 
And then let's do a numpad three and go grab y minus one. Okie doke. Now we are in wireframe mode. Let's make sure that we are in edit mode next. So let's do tab to go to edit mode and do control tab E to go to edge select mode. Let's zoom in so we can grab the right edge here. I want to do shift alt right click numpad three and I'm going to go extrude y minus point one minus point one there and then left click and we'll move this down a bit here. I want to do a scaling operation here so we will scale shift y 1.25 and then we will scale again we will extrude again extrude y minus 0.5 that direction and then extrude y minus 0 0.05 left click scale shift y 0.9 extrude again extrude y minus 0 0.05 once more enter or left click and then scale shift y 0.75 and now let's do uh, extrude scale shift y 0.8 and go back to numpad 3 zoom out a little bit so I can see everything I'm doing here and then do extrude y 2.7 just like that all right and that creates your basic gun let's hit z to go back to solid mode and hit tab and i haven't added i haven't uh, set the shading here to smooth so we have to do a little bit here i'm going to just go set save the smooth i'm going to add an edge split modifier which doesn't quite do what i want i don't want this thing curved you got a little bit of a weird curvy thing here i want this to be flat right on the front where that other crease or that other this this line is here so let's zoom in here and i'm going to shift alt right click to select that line control e and i'm going to mark sharp oh and for this to work make sure the sharp edges is checked in the add modifier so now when i go back i've got this nice little flat this little i guess they call it a crown on the barrel there and that's what i want Okay, so that takes care of creating the barrel. Let's do a numpad one here. Go back to wireframe mode, and we're going to start duplicating uh, gun barrels here. So that's going to be cylinder 02. And so let's do shift D, Z, 3. And let's zoom in here. I think we want to just go down one unit here. Yep. Okay, so let's do shift D Z minus one, and then we will do shift D Z minus three. Zoom in so we've got some minor grid units to use as guides here. All right, let's do shift D X point eight. Yeah, that'll work. And then do grab, that's a G. Uh, we want the Z axis here, and we want to go point two yes now do shift d z point six and i did this purposely to line this up where this thing is bisecting this so we get everything evenly spaced all right now let's move this thing how what do we got here we got uh, one two point one two three four five six seven so let's go shift d z one point whoops sorry that's two point seven and then again, shift D Z 2.7 there. So now we have our two, our barrels placed where we want them. But at the moment, this and all these barrel and this and all these barrels are separate objects. And I want to join these barrels to the turret piece here. So what we're going to do, I showed you to use the control J in the last video, which works. I've actually gone back and use the technique I'm going to show you now for the guns on the big ship because 
Um, I, I just, it, for, for what we're doing, I think it just works a little bit better. But I wanted to show you both techniques. So I did the first one on that video, and now I'm doing the, this one here. We're going to use the Boolean operator to join these things together. Now, I used to hate the Boolean operator because it left this horrible, just added a bunch of really, really nuisance geometry that was a pain to deal with. The Blender guys and gals who work at Blender have actually fixed this thing, so I kind of like it now, so I'm going to show you how I do this. All right, it's actually very, very simple, and it saves a lot of time and energy if you want to join two things into a single object to use the Boolean operator. So first thing, we're going to select. When you do the Boolean operator, you want to, I have found that it works best to select the item that you're joining the smaller piece to. Now you can do it the other way, but uh, for what we're doing. But I, I just find you, I run into fewer problems doing it this way. Uh, that may not always hold true, but so here we go. All right, we have selected the turret piece. We want to add the Boolean modifier to that. We want to move the, the important bit here is make sure that this modifier is at the top of the stack. Okay, so move that to the top. Then I want to select. I want to make this first barrel the one I join. I'm just selecting it right now so I get the name. Okay, it's cylinder 02, or 002, so let's select this again. And we want to do a union, and we want to do it with cylinder 02. So let's go cylinder 02, bang, there it is. Now, this thing works in real time until you apply it. So we have to apply it before it will do us any good. So apply it, and then select this barrel here, Hit G to grab, hit Y to constrain, just pull this off over here, and then hit X and delete it because we don't need it anymore. All right, so that, notice now we have some pretty tidy geometry. It's not perfect. You've got a bunch of n-gons, but it's, trust me, if, you, if you've ever done this using the old way of doing things, believe thou me, this is better. <laughs> Okay, this is act it's not perfect. There's still a couple of problems sometimes with it, but for this it worked great. All right, so that's the first one. And then for the rest of these, we follow that exact same procedure. All right, so we're going to do this one here, and we'll do the bottom one first. We'll select this guy, uh, cylinder 05. All right, we'll add the modifier to the turret piece, move it to the top. All right, select union, because we want to join them together as a single object. I just forgot the name of the one I just picked. All right, cylinder 005, select that one. We apply it, select this, and delete it. All right, so that takes care of the second one. And the rest of this is just doing that for the rest of the barrels for both guns. So I'm going to go ahead and just be quiet and do that now. Okay, and I kept this last one because it is going to be one of the guns that goes on the front of the ship as one of the main guns. They're the same gun, just different uh, dimensions. So there you have our two uh, turret guns made as single objects with the Boolean modifier. The next step, of course, will be to attach them to the ship. All right, everybody, I had to stop the recording and start over again. So let's get these things connected to the ship here. Let's go ahead and hit numpad slash. Goes back into uh, global mode there. I've moved these things a little closer to the ship here. And they are clearly too big. So let's just select one of these. We're going to start with the four barrel one here. And the first thing we want to do is get these things sort of uh, aligned and connected with the ship. I'm going to go ahead and scale this thing down. Um, let's go with about 0.5 to start. So let's just do a straight uh, hit S to scale 0.5. And that looks pretty close to what I want there. Yeah, we'll go with that. And let's move this here to numpad 3. And I'll put this one right about even with this line here. It doesn't have to be perfect for this part. 
And I think we want to move this over just a bit here. And I'm going to rotate this thing on the Y axis, so hit R, Y, and I think we're going to go about 14 degrees here, 1, 4. I'm going to take this down here, a little bit off there. Let's make that uh, over here 14.15. Still a little off, so let's go 14.2. There we go, about 15 degrees should get us where we need to be. And let's go down like so. And the key here is you want to make sure that there you don't want to see any of this white outline here. You want to make sure that way you know it's intersecting. Otherwise, the uh, the boolean we're going to apply to this won't work correctly. So there we have our first gun there, and let's go ahead then, and we're going to take this one here, do a shift D. Whoops, wrong again here. Let's uh, hit uh, Enter, Control-Z. Select that gun there. And then do a Shift-D-Z minus four. All right, close enough. Let's pull this out here like so. And I think we have to rotate this one on the Y. Um, Actually, let's just go over here on the Y and change the rotation to 165 degrees. See how close we get there. I'm going to pull this up here. Eh, it's pretty close. See how close we got with that one here. Not bad. All right, I'll go with that. I can live with that. All righty, so there you have those two guns, let's right click here, or shift right click and grab that other one. I'm going to actually knock these down on individual origins. I'm going to knock these down just a little bit more. So let's go scale point eight. Yeah, liking that a little bit better. And now, of course, I need to go and select each of these individually and move them back up so that they intersect the ship properly. There. And how's this one doing here? We got any line showing there? Okay, good enough. All right, so that takes care of that. Let's go ahead and grab this other one here and do a numpad three. And I am just going to then do a control D here, so, or a shift D rather. So do shift D Y. And let's move this one here. And then shift D Y again. And move this one right there. Okay, so that takes care of those ships right here. So let's see what the names are here. This was cylinder one, two, four, five, six, and seven. So cylinder three, I think, is this one here. Okay, well, cylinder three is a different one, but the idea being here is we take this and we do the Boolean modifier on the ship, move it to the top, we want to do a union like that, and we want this object in this case to be cylinder 01. Okay, so we go cylinder 01, bang, just like that, apply it, 
Select this here, grab Z, pull it off, and delete it. And then just repeat that for all the rest of these. So. Okay, and that takes care of those ships right there. They are all now joined as an object. When I click on this, it clicks the whole ship. We're going to hang on to this one here, and we're just going to take the rotation on the y-axis back to zero. And I'll just keep that. I'll just put that in another file later for use as an asset library. Just move that down out of the way here. Okay, then the next thing here will be to take this ship here, and we're going to do a scale point 5 and then a scale point 8 which takes it down to the same size as this gun right here and these guns are I had these designed or envisioned to be a little bit smaller and we're going to do the exact same thing on the front part here with this gun that we did on the the middle part there with these other guns the only difference is going to be that this part here tapers forward and it tapers in, so you're going to have to move the guns a little more when you put them on the ship, but that's really all that is going on there. So let's go ahead and get that situated here. Okay, and let's rotate this on the y-axis about 14 degrees, see how we do. Okay, let's go 15. Good enough, maybe even 15.1, because this might be a little bit different, 15.2, uh, yeah, might even go 15.5 on that one, but uh, we will stick with this right now. Now these are the same size as the original guns, we want these to be a little smaller, so let's go ahead and scale these, 0.75. Yes, 16 I like better. All right, so these guys here are essentially pointing straight, even though the thing is tapering, and we're going to have to move these in. So let's go ahead and do the uh, duplicate and and rotate for the bottom side here. Okay, make that 164 for the rotation there, and get this thing all the way buried in there. Okay, that takes care of the first two. Let's go to numpad three, pop this thing out. Oh, I don't have my screencast keys on here. Sorry about that. All right, but you know what I'm doing here. Okay, so these are now uh, set. Let's go and right click there to select both of these. Zoom out a little bit here, move this thing. So with that, we do the same thing we did again, and we do shift D. Y, and we'll put these right here, and since this thing tapers in and down, we're going to need to move them in just a bit here. And you might need to make these bases a little, I, I extended these these bases at the bottom at a, a point, uh, point 0.25, minus point 0.25, might need to knock that to a point 0.5 for these guns because of the taper. There we go, numpad 3, and we will go shift D, Y, get both of them here, now do shift D, Y, and we'll put these right there, and of course numpad 1, we will have to move these in some. And we will just do the little move thing again. There we are. Getting a little closer here, make this easier to see. Okay, and then you just do the Boolean join again, and you've got the guns on the front. You can put more or less depending on how you want to do this. So let's go ahead and 
crank on these ships here. This is, oh, this is cylinder. And okay, so that's how they're doing that. All right, so this is cylinder four, cylinder two, cylinder five, cylinder six. Okay, so cylinder, all right, on the ship. Okay, that puts the guns going along the sides of the ship there. And so now we have these. And I think I put four on the uh, on the other ship there. I think I had four on there. Yeah, I had four on the front part there. You can put as many as you want. You know, you get the idea. If you want to put more in there, put more in there. You won't hurt my feelings. All right, now let's grab this one here floating off in the middle of nowhere. Move it back here. Move it down like so, so it's reasonably near this thing, and let's set the Y rotation on this thing to zero. There. Okay, so that takes care of the guns that go along the side of the ship, and the last thing we have to do is these guns here, and I've already put one gun here. This is cylinder three, I believe, the elusive cylinder three. Uh, and all this is is one of these barrels that I just made, one of the one of the barrels on the little guns that I just made bigger. That's all <laughs> that's all that is. It's just it's just I made it you know bigger and fatter. And let's go numpad one here and let's uh, see if we can't uh, Okay, do a numpad seven. Yeah, and it's lined up, and it's a, it's a little bit canted inward, which is what you want. You don't want your guns all flying straight out. All right, so what we're going to do here, first thing we're going to do, uh, let's grab this. We're going to do a shift D, Z, and just bring it straight down like that onto that uh, thing there. Yes, okay, a little slow because I'm accumulating quite a bit of data to muddle through here. All right, so that takes care of those two guns. Let's shift D this one more time. All right, and for, so the first thing, let's uh, leave this off for a minute. Let's grab the ship. And this is cylinder three, and this is cylinder zero, zero, zero. Okay, so let's uh, go ahead and select the ship. Do another Boolean, who? Oops, okay, hold on. <laughs> there, okay, so we have that back there. I forgot to apply this here Boolean modifier thing. And this, which cylinder we got there? Cylinder six, okay, I forgot to apply this Boolean modifier here. Okay, I went and put it back on. All right, so now let's go back and we're going to redo this whole bit here. Let's uh, shift D this, shift D, Z. Drop it down like that. Do a numpad one. Okay, grab this one here along with, do a numpad seven. And let's move this just a tiny bit there. A little bit more. There. Okay. And they're canted inward. They're, they're pointing inward just a touch, which is kind of crucial. All right. So let's select this bottom one here. Do a shift D, Z, pull this down here. Let's do a numpad slash, so we're in local mode here. 
go to uh, tab into edit mode. And what we want to do here is I want to do a few, go to control tab F to go to face mode. And I want to make this look just a little bit different. First thing we're going to do, turn off limit selection to visible, do a B to box select, grab these guys, and I want to make this just a tiny bit shorter. Okay, and I'm pad three. How short are we going here? Let's just go one line back like that. Okay, good enough. Hit A to deselect, uh, turn limit selection to visible back on, and now let's go ahead on these faces and select, select two at a time here like this. And this will depend a little bit on the number of faces you put in your, you know, the number of uh, vertices you put in your cylinder, but um, there we go. All right, so now let's make sure we have median selected as our pivot point, and let's do a uh, extrude scale shift y 1.15. Yes, and now let's just grab all of these and pull them forward like that. A little farther. There we go. Just to give this thing somewhat of a beefier look to it. In fact, actually, I like something better. Let's do another. Let's do go back one and let's go ahead and grab these guys here too. Let's do a bang, bang. Extrude scale shift Y. And go 1.15 like that and then go forward just like so till it's even with the front there okay just yep and we will need to do a mark sharp here so shift tab e let's go control alt and we're going to have to go all the way around doing this because, well, just because. Then control E, mark sharp. Alrighty, and that clears up the worst we're shading errors there. Yep, I like that. You may, of course, do whatever you like with this, but uh, there we go, just wanna make that gun a little bit different. All right, let's hit numpad slash again. And let's take this thing, move it over, go numpad one, move this thing over. And let's also, let's move this thing back. So let's do this, and let's just scale it up some. Numpad seven. All right, let's scale it down just a little bit here. Numpad seven. Let's move this over a little bit like that. There we go. And that takes care of the main guns on the front. You, of course, can do your own thing with those. You won't hurt my feelings. And we might want to just rotate this on the Z axis a touch there. Okay so that these lines are a little closer to parallel. Okay, so that takes care of that, and we'll have these basically converging at some point way in front of the ship. But there we are. So now we go to the ship, we add the Boolean modifier again, All right, and that, folks, with a few uh, miscellaneous pieces to be, we'll just hide these for the moment here. And we'll hide these too, just so they're not 
going all over. Okay, so that is the ship with all of its guns put on there, and you can adjust the size or the length and all of this. You might want to make these a little, these front guns a little bit bigger because they're kind of dwarfed by the thing. You might even want to inset them a little bit, make just holes in the front where these things come out. It's up to you. But the idea is kind of let your imagination run a bit wild. Don't take any of what I do here as gospel truth here. But uh, that is, that is the, uh, how I added the guns. I hope you found this useful. Please comment, like, and subscribe if you did. And that will be it for this one. The next one will be on the materials, which will be should be a pretty quick one because I didn't get very fancy on the materials. But so that's it for this one. I thank you for watching and have a great rest of the day.